We're traveling to Alderet. That's where we're going to be staying before we go to Matsunda. Matsunda is about an hour and a half, I think, from Alderet by car. I always knew I wanted to go back to Africa because having grown up there, I was a witness firsthand to some of the difficulties that people have to deal with. I found Engineers Without Borders professional chapter and uh, luckily enough, uh, after a couple of meetings, I uh, found out that there was this uh, project in, in Kenya um, and it just all came together at that point. The Matunda project, basically what we're trying to do is develop a sustainable, potable, clean drinking water supply for the Matunda Health Center. When I was in Mexico, the town where I grew up is pretty much like the communities where I work now through Engineers Without Borders. I mean, when I was six years old, I did the same thing that the kids who are six years old in these communities do. They went at six in the morning to, you know, the river down the hill or the public tap down the hill and I had to carry water up. So I remember kind of what that was like and I hated waking up at six in the morning and having to fetch water up to my grandmother's house. I was given a huge opportunity by coming to the States. Because of that, I can be an engineer and I can do all these great things. I mean, I could be one of those kids, so that's how I give back to them. I can at least help them or give them a better quality of life through my skills now. After we did all of our introductions, they finally walked us through the entire clinic. So they pointed out the deficiencies, they explained the, the history of the room, when it was built, and who funded it. So we learned, we learned a little bit about their, their water needs. Just as we went to the, to the lab, they had a pool of water which was brown, and then another pool of soapy water, and that's it. And we're like, and they explained to us, well, this is our, our lab, and when we clean our hands and you know give shots or, or sterilize anything, they dip it in soapy water and then they dip it on this murky water. No, they dip it in the murky water and then in the soapy water, or vice versa. I don't even remember what their process was because either one would not be good. So, as we're going through each room, we you know all the deficiencies, all the seem to have more rooms than I thought from the initial pictures. The place seemed bigger to me, but because it was bigger, their deficiencies were that much greater. I believe that infrastructure, sanitation are keys to public health. So um, as a public health lead for the project uh, in Matunda, I am responsible for the collection of community health data. Probably, but what is the average attendance here at the clinic? Mm. Let's say averagely it's around 40 to 50. 40 to 50 people. Yeah. During uh, rain season, malaria, typhoid. So uh, that involves um, doing surveying of the health center staff and the surrounding community in terms of their habits for water usage. The guy said that this is um, the main source of the piped water, and because this is dry, it's prob probable that the rest of the pipe zones are going to be dry as well. I would bet here. Do they have a school that's closer to the site than this one? Or yeah, is this I know. Closest? Apparently, these are the closest ones. I don't think it's too hard. One of the biggest issues, as it is in many uh, developing countries, is issues of diarrhea and you know things like typhoid. I mean, these are diseases you get from waterborne illnesses, which is directly related to the bacteria that's in the water. The water that we tested when we were over there all the sources of water in the village were completely contaminated with pathogens. We just had a presence absence test and you know the quicker these presence absence tests turn 
the more pathogens you know are in the water. And all the water that we collected from the area that we're going to, they turn very quickly. They have latrines and uh, cows just roaming everywhere. There's no like defined fences for farmland. The latrines are hand dug, so they're open. Most of the wells are shallow dug wells and they don't have a casing, meaning it's just open soil interface between, you know, it's just a hole in the ground basically. At the health center there actually was a masonry casing that went down, but there's no telling how sealed that casing is, if, it's, if there's any cracks, I mean all that stuff is up to debate and the water that I tested from that well had pathogens in it, so it's definitely not a clean water source. We don't give people any opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our goal is not to just go there, build a system, and we're done. It's a sustainable project. We want to make sure they can maintain it. We do post-implementation, so we go back, we check up on them, we make sure that they learn. So we try to extend our involvement with, our, with the community for more than the, the uh, uh, approximated or um, I guess anticipated project lengths. <laughs>